Hi everyone, welcome back. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video. And without further ado, let's get to it. So, as I have mentioned in a previous video, I was fortunate enough to go to several quilt guild shows and past couple weekends and a shop hop. So this video, I'm going to share with you my purchases from the Valley Forge Quilt Guild Quilt Show. Wow, that's a mouthful. Anyway, let's get to it. So at this Quilt Guild show, I didn't purchase any scrap fabrics. By this point, I was pretty much scrap fabric and just fabric out. I was just overwhelmed with the amount of fabrics that I had purchased the previous weekend and the fact that they were not put away. It was, you know, a reason why I didn't want to have to deal with more fabric. But I did find some great treasures and I'm going to share with you those treasures. So I always, every time I go to any kind of quilt shows, whether, or I go and Antiquing or thrifting or whatever it is, I always look for orphan blocks because I decided I have, you know, quite a few orphan blocks that I made years and years ago. And now I look at them and there is no way I'm going to put that quilt together just because some of these blocks are just wonky. And so I figured, you know, as quilters, we all have blocks that are a little wonky and a little like you look at it and think, what was I doing? I mean, was I watching? Was I on something? Was I medicated or something? Because this quilt block is just not square. There's, it's just crazy. So what I decided would be fun is to gather all those blocks, wonky or not, and just piece them into a quilt top. So I've been collecting them and I thought it would be kind of fun. And you know, it's going to be a fun quilt. It's going to be a quilt that if points get cut off, so be it. If it's, if, you know, the lines aren't straight or the block is going one way, it does not matter because this is my UFO scrappy, crazy quilt that I am planning to put together. And and the whole point of doing that is because I get to put on my long arm. As if, if you've seen previous videos, I do have a long arm and I am able to machine quilt uh, my quilt tops. So yes, that would be fun. Also, because I don't want to leave any orphan blocks out there. You know, they all deserve to go into a quilt and it would be fun and you know what? Sometimes they're quilts that we make and we just don't want to use them. They will spend so much time into them and we don't, you know, we put them away in drawers. But this quilt, my goal is just to have quilts on the grass when we go picnicking and, you know, not to worry about all the fussiness of, you know, certain quilts. I thought it would be a fun thing to do. And you know, every block deserves to be put into a quilt. So without further ado, let's get into it. I think I already said that, but I, I can't remember because I've tried recording this video quite a few times now. And so I'm going to show you the blocks that I, or the block that I purchased over there. Now this one, the one, the blocks I usually like or I'm looking for are within the 12 and a half inch range, but this one is 16 and a half. And see, you see how sometimes they're just, you know, a lot shorter, like a quarter of an inch it's off. That's okay. I'm planning to turn this block into a pillow. And truthfully, I don't really care if the points get cut off. That's not what I'm, I just want to make every block into something. I just want block to just have have a purpose I guess <laughs> so anyway so this block I thought it would be 
fun to turn it into a pillow and maybe I'll use because I don't have any of these fabrics in my sash because this is an orphan block from someone else I decided maybe I can use like some navy and just do something like that for the back so that'll be fun and I just I might just throw it on my long arm or just do some free motion get a few blocks that I or small quilts that I've made that need machine quilting and I will put that on and it doesn't really matter what backing I use because it's going to go on the inside it's going to be a pillow anyway so I did find this so I found a couple of vintage quilt tops and they say that they're uh, okay, so we'll get to those in a minute. Anyway, so here I have 65 half square triangle blocks, mostly assembled into rows. So I opened this bag when I got home and I laid them out and I love this fabric. It looks like vintage fabric. So I'm not sure what the piecer was thinking. But what I am going to do is I'm going to take these blocks apart. At least every four. So I'm going to make it into a small quilt. And I thought it would be really cute as a, maybe um, not a table runner, but like a little, oh my gosh, a small quilt for a table, a placemat kind of thing. So, and it's really long. So there's quite a few. So two of the rows are just the same. That's the fabric. And I'm not sure if they use different fabrics or just faded because it was in, you know, near a light source that deteriorated the color or faded the color. And then the other ones are, again, it looks like they used vintage fabric with maybe actually they both look vintage look how thin this one is i'm not sure we can see that it's very thin you can almost see through it so i'm gonna make a small baby quilt with these and again i'm gonna have to take them apart because there is no rhyme or reason and i think some of them so i have to figure out the size of quilts I want to make and then and there are some fun fabrics and then I will just take the blocks apart to that point so and usually this you see the difference sometimes that drives me crazy but for these quilts I'm not even gonna think about that I'm just gonna take the blocks apart to whatever size I want it and then stitch and have something for you know I'll put it on the long arm and I can just use it for my table I think this will make it like a really cute table mat for a kitchen table or even the dining table I thought that was really cute and here are some loose blocks so that was a fun thing that was a fun find because I really love those fabrics. Anyway, now moving on to some books. I found some really cool books. And this book, it was in my Amazon wish list. So, yay. So the cool thing is, yes, I paid 50 cents for books there. That's So soft cover books were 50 cents. Hard cover books, I think, were a dollar. And patterns were 50 cents. So yeah, pretty good find. <laughs> Great deals. So I mean, you'd be surprised. A lot of people don't go through the books. But there are some great books. And I love to crochet. Well, I haven't done it much lately. But I thought that would be pretty cool. And here is, I'm trying to do more modern type quilting or piecing I don't know I've never felt comfortable having a lot of white in my quilts but we'll see 
And I thought these, so when I collect books is really more for inspiration than to actually use them for pattern or rather than making the quilts, I use it for inspiration. So I don't know if that makes sense. Anyway, so here, look at all those beautiful fabrics. I love that. Isn't that cute? So the one thing I really enjoy about modern quilts is the quilting. There's a lot of straight lines and that is, you know, that's sort of relaxing because you don't have to really think of, I've always loved feathers. They're very traditional and, but sometimes you need something calming and I, I feel like straight line quilting is very soothing. At least for me it is. And I, I love um, Jenny Byer. Am I saying that right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so here's a quilt book of hers. And so a lot of the stuff is sketched. She, I remember seeing her on, oh my gosh, this is a throwback, Simply Quilts with Alex Anderson. So I, um, Okay, oh, train of thought. So she does, I'm, I'm not sure if she still does, but her piecing was all hand done. So she hand stitched all of her blocks. She would cut them with a scissor, you know, use templates, all, all of the wonderful things. And I thought it was always so cool. So, and you know what? I actually hand pieced a quilt. And I did start hand quilting it. I just need to finish. And I never did. So that quilt has been waiting for 20 years. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking of just finishing the outer part and just putting the binding on and just quilting whenever I want to quilt on it. But that's a video for another day. Anyway, and I got... A little pack of Rick Rack because, yeah, you can never say no to Rick Rack. I also found this really cute little pin cushion. <laughs> it's a bottle cap. And you have a little elastic. And then you have the stuffing and the fabric. Unfortunately, the elastic is too tight. But cute, right? I thought so. And then I got this little pattern here see if I can open it. Ah. So I got this pattern to make a table runner and this book of half square, I mean, this is to make this block. So this is the foundation paper piecing. And there's 42 sheets in this pad and it makes a six and a half unfinished block and it's and so the person that previously owned this actually said what would be needed to make this i thought it was pretty cool i have a lots of i've actually been collecting lori holt fabrics but I think it would be a good thing to combine her fabrics with some of my um, 1930s repros because they have that kind of feel to it. So I think I'm going to do this definitely. Not sure when. I have a few projects on my table right now. But yeah, I want to definitely do that now. Sorry, I also, I had to walk away for a second. I also found um, this book there. And this is a Fat Quarter style book. And it's from It's So 
it's so Emma. Oh my gosh. Um, really cool quilts. I like this one a lot. Where is it? This one. Isn't that pretty? Something about the, the dark background just, it makes those flowers pop. So that was a fun one. And I also found this. I'm not sure. It feels like a magazine, but it was in the book section. And again, inspiration. And it talks about, you know, there's a little section about, I guess, the quilter and maybe the quilt. And I haven't read it. So, but yeah, again, I bought this for inspiration. And then I got some machine kind of quilting type books. So, see, so there's patterns I can trace. And then there's this one. I thought it was pretty cool. And then here's another one, which I thought was fun. I figured why not. And this is all about feathers. I love feathers. I'm not sure if I ever mentioned that, but I love feathers. Again, I'm not really great at making them, but I love them. So anyway, I thought this would be great fun to practice with. So those were my books. And, oh, you know what? I almost forgot. You might be wondering, what is that in the back? So let me move this book, these books to the side. If they're in the way right now. And let's move this over here. So clear this up a little. So here are some vintage quilt tops. And this is, and I'm not gonna be able to show the entire quilt because obviously there's not enough space, but you get the feel. Isn't this pretty? Look at these blocks. There's thread everywhere. How pretty. And this quilt is 68, or this quilt top is 68 by 76. And this is old fabric. Ooh. This looks, to me, some of this fabric looks like shirting. And the entire quilt was hand-pieced. So I'm not sure, it was interesting because I was gonna machine quilt them, but I'm not sure. I really enjoy looking at the back of hand pieced quilt tops, but then I feel like I'll never use them if they don't get machine quilted. But then one of the ladies at the show said that your quilt is only as old as your what does she say as your most recent stitch? So if I machine quilt it, then it's no longer a 1920s slash 50s quilt. It becomes a 2022 quilt. So using vintage fabrics, but I don't know. So anyway, so, and this one is 44 by 77. Look how cool. I love these fabrics. I mean, true, I would never put them all together like this because there's a lot of work in this, but you can't really see the pattern because everything is so, all these fabrics are so wild. I mean, I love it. So let's see. I mean, it's, there is a nine patch here. Can you see that? Right here. And then there's kind of like a star here. You see it, the points. And then there's a four patch on the diagonal in between. So I'm not sure how they piece this, but it is, it's beautiful. And again, the pattern gets lost because there's so much going on in the fabrics. But it's beautiful. I mean, I love them. I love each individual fabric for 
you know, for each individual fabric. But anyway, so my dilemma is, do I machine quilt these two tops, right? And enjoy them, or do I just leave them as is and just call them vintage slash antique quilts and just let them be? But my fear of that is that maybe someday someone will just toss them out because they'll consider them not being usable quilts because in reality they've really I mean you can't use them because you can't wash them though so I don't know I'm I'm in a little I'm having a little dilemma over that I don't know maybe I'll wake up one day and say yeah oh, forget it I'll just put them on the long arm and just quilt them or maybe even hand quilt them <laughs> but let's let's get real here I'm not gonna hand quilt them I, yeah, it's not going to happen. So I don't know. I don't know. Just, it would be great if I can, you know, if you would leave your thoughts and your, in the comments. So just help me out with deciding whether to machine quilt these. And I also want to honor the, the piecer, the quilter that made these quilts. See, that's my dilemma. I would like to honor this person. I don't know who this person was, but I would like to honor her or him most of them. And because I know that I would love for all my quilt tops to be quilted. And if someone would find one of my quilt tops that just wasn't quilted, I would love for them to finish it off for me. But because, you know, fun. But again, not sure. What do you guys think? Because this is a really tough decision. I don't want to ruin it and I don't want to damage the quilts. Which, you know. So anyway. Please leave your thoughts in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.